What is up guys, the new Monty here, and today I'm going to be telling you about the most disappointing commander we've seen out of C2020, Jarena Kudrow. <laughs> Wait, before 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 you guys hit the dislike button, please hear my opinion on this. I want to tell you why this card absolutely sucks and why this whole deck is not that great at all. So, kicking things off, Jarena Kudro for one, a red, a white, and a black legendary creature, human soldier, for a 3-3. When Jarena Kudro enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. For each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game, other humans you control get plus two plus oh. That second ability isn't too bad. It's the rest of the card that is absolute junk, and I don't understand why Wizards of the Coast decided that this is going to be the face card of this pre-constructed deck. The other ones we've seen and the other two that I've covered so far on this channel are absolutely immeasurable in power. And then we have something like this, that one is a four drop, which is already too expensive for this kind of ability. I could understand if she was a three drop, that would make a little bit more sense. And also the biggest setback on this card is that you get a single one, one, I guess it comes out as a two, one or a three, one, but you get a single creature token for each time you cast a commander from the command zone. You don't get it because a commander entered the battlefield, which should be her ability. If her ability stated something like when she enters the battlefield, regardless of her position in the first place, you get a 1-1, one, one, that would be okay. Or she, she doesn't even have any abilities. She doesn't have haste, vigilance, anything that you would normally see on a human in Mardu colors. If she brought out some humans with lifelink, that would be even better. If she brought along maybe two creatures each time and those were constantly doubled. But the problem is, if she is going to be your commander in the deck, then you have to cast her from the command zone. You can you can cheat the, the cost a little bit, but you can't bring the commander from your command zone to your hand and cast it. It has to be from the command zone. And we don't see a whole lot of synergy with that, especially in Mardu colors. So, what we have here is not a whole lot to work with, and the whole deck basically just wants you to crap out as many human tokens as you possibly can, or play as many humans as possible, and you can pump them and swing them at your team. That's a pretty decent ability. That plus two plus oh is the only thing that is saving this card right now, and is the reason I'm going to be ridiculing it for the next probably seven minutes of this video. So what do we have to go off of here? We have a plus two plus O that humans get, and we have whenever you ca or whenever she enters the battlefield, you create a one one white human soldier creature token for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game. I'm not gonna start talking about them right away, but the partner commanders, which I've talked about in each video so far, are ones that are more likely that you will be running in this deck. And if you ran those two as your partners, I could understand why you would have Jarena as part of the 99 because then you're getting two you're casting two commanders and she's going to bring out two 1/1 one, one white human yeah white human soldier creature tokens as long as you've cast those two commanders and as long as you still have multiple commanders to cast you're going to be getting more human soldier creature tokens every time she enters the battlefield and luckily she's at least in white so we can get some ETBs off of her so that's why she needs to be part of the 99. She should not be the face commander of this deck. But what are we going to do with this other ability? Other humans you control get plus two plus oh. Not even her. She's a 3-3. Three, three. She can get pinged down pretty quickly. But I guess with her as the commander, you want her back in the command zone so you can keep casting her. Even though we're not even running the colors to ramp in this deck. You need something like Smothering Tide in this deck. Or Smothering Tide. You absolutely have to have it if you're going to have any mana whatsoever and you want to be uh, casting your commander multiple times in a turn. So we have this effect where we pump our humans 
we want to keep doing that. That's a good direction to take this deck, and I can see people swinging in for a lot of damage with a lot of different human creature tokens. So what this deck wants to do is just, again, crap out as many human creature tokens as possible, and what I would include in this deck is definitely something like Dictate of Heliod, and eventually we're going to get into a Dictate of Erebos. Those are cards that you're going to want to have in this deck that just pump your team. You want pump spells, you want enchantments that are going to keep giving your creature tokens everything that they can, because it seems like you're going to be making all these human tokens. What you're going to have to do with her as your commander is attack with them, but with the other commanders in this deck, we want to be killing all the humans that we have. So, I'm going to move away from her. One more card I will suggest, though, is Iroas, God of Victory. Giving all of your creatures menace is pretty great. But if we're not going to be running her, we need to be probably running Kelsian the Plague. He is one of the other side commanders. He is a 3-drop, which he should be, a red, a white, and a black, legendary creature, human assassin, vigilance and haste. Kelsey in the play gets plus one, plus one for each experience counter you have. So they're bringing experience counters back, and there's actually quite a few cards in Magic, well, not quite a few, there's a good handful of cards in Magic that can give you experience counters. You can tap Kelsey and you can tap him. Kelsey and deals one damage to target creature you don't control. When that creature dies this turn, you get an experience counter. So, for this, if we're going to be taking the deck in this direction, we want to just be pinging down our opponents as creatures as fast as we can, so you need to be uh, equipping this creature with something like Gorgon's Head that gives it Death Touch, or Archetype of Finality is another great one because then all of your creatures have Death Touch and your opponents are not allowed to have Death Touch. So no matter what, this dude's going to be pinging your, creature, your, your opponents' creatures for one, killing them every single time, that's pretty fantastic. But still, not a good pick. What are you going to do with this? You need to be able to untap him. We don't have quite the right colors for that. White's a pretty good one to untap. And I guess with the Boros colors, you do have a couple cards that let you untap to take an additional combat step so you can keep tapping him again. But that's not going to do us a whole lot of good. So our other option is Trin and Silvar. And still, you're very, very limited with these commanders. Trin, Champion of Freedom, is for three and a white legendary creature, human soldier. Partner with Silvar, Devourer of the Free. At the beginning of your end step, if you attacked this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. And before I actually go over their abilities, Silvar, Devourer of the Free. For three, a black and a red. Legendary creature, Cat Nightmare, partner with Trin, Champion of Freedom. He has Menace. That's already pretty decent. Sacrifice a human, put a plus one, plus one counter on Silvar, Devourer of the Free. It gains Indestructible until end of turn. This is the most likely pair that I would run as commanders for my deck. Because you have a free Sacrifice outlet, you have a, uh, a commander that can get Indestructible, and you have an outlet that makes the tokens that want to be sacrificed in the first place. So we're going to be doing what a lot of competitive decks in Magic like to do, and that's sacrifice creatures to kill everything on the board. If it is broke, keep running it, okay? That's something that we've learned in Magic with a lot of different decks. And there are a lot of humans that want to sacrifice, and there's a lot of humans that want to be sacrificed. So we're going to be running sacrifice outlets like Altar of Dementia, that's a really good one if you want to be milling out your opponents, and even creatures that provide sacrifice outlets, like Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Something like this is going to be huge for the deck. The problem is with these commanders is that they're very limited, because with Silvar, you have to sacrifice a human to get this trigger, and you can copy death triggers with stuff like Taste of Karlov. Super big in this deck, very important. But with Trin, Champion of Freedom, you can attack, and then let's say you have your Altar of Dementia out on the battlefield, and your opponent's going to choose to block your, your terrible 1-1 one, one creature token. You can go ahead and sacrifice that token at instant speed, which is pretty great. That's something we can, we can do with this deck so that we're not going to be taking a whole lot of damage, and it doesn't really matter if our creatures get through all the way. But Trin's only going to make us one token. So 
there's a lot of different things that we need to fix about this deck. Like I said before, you need to be running something like Dictate of Erebos. Or if you're going to be doubling up on damage, which you definitely should be in this deck, you need to be running things like Dictate of the Twin Gods and Fiendish Duo. These are both fairly expensive cards, but this deck doesn't get super competitive. But if we want to take it in a direction where we're going to win through damage, we want things like that. And we're going to keep sacrificing and getting our opponents to sacrifice their things. So you want to be running cards like Mogus, God of Slaughter, who's going to let you uh, make your force your opponents to lose life or sacrifice. And then you're swinging in with your indestructible uh, Nightmare Cat. And there's all kinds of creatures, especially humans, that want things to die and they want to work with other humans very well. Things like Mentor of the Meek are going to give you card draw. Things like um, Magus or Magus of the Balance, you get to kill him. You get to sacrifice him to even out the playing field with lands, creatures, stuff like that. He works great in the deck. You should be picking one of these up and running them for sure. Worthy Knight. Knights is a separate anthem I would definitely be considered running in this deck because a lot of humans are also knights, or a lot of knights are also humans, so you're getting bonus value out of that. Massacre Girl to get things to die even more often. And then I would even run something like Demon of the Dark Schemes. It's not a super expensive card, and it's a very costly card. It's not even a human. But for three, triple black, creature demon, flying, when it enters the battlefield, all other creatures get minus two, minus two, until end of turn. Whenever another creature dies, you get an energy counter. For two, a black, and paying four energy counters, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control tapped. So you're still getting your humans back after they've died. And this card can actually act as a board wipe in some scenarios, especially if we're only going to be making 1-1 one, one creature tokens out of this deck. So there's a little bit of flexibility with this, but there's not enough. And that's why this deck is so low on my list that I had to put it dead last. And I actually wanted to talk about this one before I talked about any other good decks. So I'm sorry if you all hate my opinion, but I hope I can help you. And I hope I did just help you by telling you ways you can upgrade this deck and ways you can actually try to play it. Because for right now, this deck seems almost unplayable. But Thank you guys so much for watching this. Let me know what your opinion is down in the comments below. I will be happy to read them and respond to all of them. But thank you so much for watching this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.